one of the many shocks when traveling to New Jersey for the first time will be the realization that you cannot turn left nor make U-turns in many places. Myself being a Southern man, now spending some time in the Northeast, I found myself naturally hanging out in the left lane, anticipating the intersection where I could either turn left or pop a U-turn to reach destinations on the other side of the road. After passing several stoplights and finally noticing a turns from the right lane only sign, it hit me that this is the new normal, or better yet, the new Jersey normal. And thus, I experienced my first Jersey jug handle. So on this video, we'll be talking about this intersection design that is so prevalent across New Jersey why it's used, and what are its advantages and disadvantages. I also talk about some of my personal experience with them being from out of state. So go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe as we go ahead and explore the first of many transportation oddities and quirks in the Northeastern US. So the first order of business, what is a New Jersey jug handle? The jug handle is a type of modified left turn in countries where traffic drives on the right side of the road. Turning traffic is directed to a side ramp that crosses over the main roadway via a crossing road or sometimes a gray separated bridge. There are three different configurations of the Jersey jug handle as defined by the Federal Highway Administration. The first type A features two or more through lanes in each direction on the main road with a jug handle ramp where drivers can then turn left or right at the crossing road with U-turn traffic utilizing the left turn at the intersection. Type A eliminates all left turns or U-turns off the main road at the intersection. Type B is the U-turn ramp. With this type, there is no crossing intersection, but rather just a ramp for U-turns only that provides a queuing space and a signal for U-turning traffic to cross the roadway to complete the U-turn. You may have seen a similar design to this in other states with the super street design, which instead adds U-turn only lanes to the left side of the roadway and provides a sometimes signalized intersection to complete the turn in the opposite direction. In the type C, a reverse jug handle ramp is used. Left turning traffic will travel through the intersection with through traffic and utilize a reverse ramp shortly afterwards to loop around and merge in with traffic headed into that direction with the crossing intersection. Right turning traffic can still turn right at the intersection normally. Making a U-turn with type C may be impossible coming off the ramp, so an additional ramp may be required for U-turning traffic to reach the desired direction. Those not familiar with New Jersey may find this similar to the left turning ramp used at Cloverleaf interchanges on many freeways. In many places, additional ramps and combinations of different types of jug handles are used. An example of this is here at this intersection of US-1 and Main Street in North Brunswick, which features a type A jug handle at each approach and a type C reverse jug handle for northbound US-1 drivers wanting to make the left turn or U-turn in the intersection. So how well do these intersections work? Well, the biggest and most obvious advantage of these ramps is the elimination of the left turn conflict point. In traffic, the left turn is usually the source of the most dangerous potential crashes as well as delay. The intersection is made significantly safer by removing high volume left turning traffic. This is also advantageous to pedestrians and bikers. The jug handle reduces the width of the intersection, thereby shortening the time to cross. It also eliminates right turns from the main intersection, reducing potential conflict with pedestrians and bikers. Travel time delay through the intersection itself is reduced due to less phases needed for all the traffic to clear the intersection. This reduced delay also allows for bikers and pedestrians to clear the intersection more quickly. Also, the ramp itself provides queuing space for left turning traffic and simultaneously removes that queuing traffic from the main road. Think about the bottleneck you've probably seen at times where the left turning traffic queue is so long that it backs up into the intersection, thereby slowing down the faster left lane traffic and overall just making for a mess of an intersection. With the jug handle, that traffic is pushed into its own separate queuing area. Another advantage is the way the U-turn is made. Note that with the typical intersection, there's sometimes a conflict with right turning traffic from the crossing road. In some cases, you'll see signs such as U-turn yield to right turn or no turn on red in attempt to mitigate this conflict. However, we've all seen cases where drivers completely ignore these signs and a game of who blinks first ensues. While all this is going on, traffic wanting to turn left is delayed, waiting for the U-turn driver to figure it out with the right turn driver, thereby transferring more overall delay into the main road. With the jug handle separating U-turning traffic, there is no question of when the U-turning traffic can go, as the conflict with the right turn from the crossing road is completely eliminated. And finally, the jug handle provides some right-of-way advantages. In many locations, especially in urban areas, 
it can be expensive or outright impossible to expand the overall width to accommodate new left turn lanes. In such locations, it may be cheaper to acquire right of way for the jug handle ramp rather than a longer corridor along both sides of the road in order to expand it and add left turning lanes. An example of this is this intersection in Edison, New Jersey where Old Post Road crosses US-1. US-1 has six lanes of through traffic with only a concrete median as typically seen on urban freeways. Right away acquisition to add the left turning lanes could have impacted several businesses near the intersection, but the jug handle ramp instead appears to have only required the acquisition of one parcel. So that's the good, but there has to be some bad or else all states would use them, right? The main drawback to the Jersey jug handle is driver confusion. If you're not from New Jersey or nearby states, then this is an awkward and uncommon configuration. Drivers in the U.S. are used to turning from the left lane and in many cases will drive in the leftmost lane in anticipation of being able to make a left turn or U-turn. I experienced this quite a bit myself until finally becoming acclimated to the jug handle. There can also be some inconsistency in areas the driver isn't familiar with as some intersections have jug handles, while in other places, a standard intersection may be used. However, advanced signage can help mitigate some of this confusion. While traffic flow and pedestrian movement is improved on the main road, the additional intersection with the jug handle can slow down movement on the crossing road and also creates a new conflict point for pedestrians along that road. Then back on the main road, traffic entering the jug handle moves faster than at a typical right turn, potentially causing a more dangerous conflict point with pedestrians along the main road. The overall delay for left turning vehicles is higher due to having to potentially queue on the jug handle ramp before entering the crossroad and queue again at the intersection signal itself. A major disadvantage, which I also experienced myself a few times, is that when the jug handle exit is too close to the intersection, the traffic on the crossing road may queue up too much and block the exit. With this delay, traffic on the jug handle can potentially queue into the right lane of the main road. I saw this a few times with the jug handles on US-1, where I eventually had to just turn right and find some lot or driveway to turn around in. A disadvantage that I touched on earlier is with the reverse jug handle and drivers making a U-turn. When exiting the reverse jug handle, the driver must quickly cross several lanes of through traffic to reach the left turning lane, oftentimes a difficult, dangerous, and nearly impossible maneuver. In most cases, I did see an additional reverse jug handle used to prevent this situation. However, the use of the second jug handle requires a U-turning driver to pass through the intersection three times. On the pedestrian side, transit stops are cautioned against being located near the intersection as a high number of pedestrians in these intersections can make for some dangerous conflicts. The Type A jug handle in particular has a potential issue due to driver behavior. Some aggressive drivers can potentially use the jug handle ramp to escape queued traffic on the main road by turning left at the jug handle exit and turning right back onto the main road. And finally, the last disadvantage of the Jersey jug handle is also right-of-way related. Depending on the configuration, there will be various right-of-way requirements. And unlike a standard intersection, businesses are unlikely to be located along the jug handle ramp itself, preventing some of the land from being developed near the intersection. So that's the standard rundown on the Jersey jug handle. Now, what about my personal experiences and opinion on this design as a man from the south. I personally agree with one of the drawbacks being the unfamiliarity with the design. The first time I encountered these were in the Philadelphia suburbs around Cherry Hill. While I quickly noticed what appeared to be an insane number of cloverleaf ramps, it finally hit me about the no left turns one day when looking for a restaurant for dinner. I saw a spot on the left side of the highway and began cruising in the left lane. About three intersections later of no left turns and no U-turns, I finally looked to the right and noticed the all turns from the right lane sign. After using this one, I started to notice that this was common along many major arterials in the region and discovered the new Jersey jug handle. Eventually, I reprogrammed my brain to look to the right when I saw something I wanted to access on the opposite side of the road. I had been converted to a temporary New Jerseyan. On the traffic flow front, this made a lot of sense. With the jug handle, traffic flow along roads like US-1 and New Jersey 28 moved along at an impressive rate. While not matching a fully controlled access freeway, the absence of left turns and U-turns significantly reduced the number of times the left lane through traffic had to stop, which also aligned with the general rule of right side of the road driving and that the left lane is reserved for passing and faster moving traffic. In traditional intersections, this flow is disrupted by slower moving traffic, large trucks, and U-turning traffic using or camping in the left lane in anticipation of the left turn. With these jug handles, all the slow movement and action is pushed to the slower rightmost lane. At the optimum level, the jug handle worked best when there were at least three through lanes. 
with trucks and buses being barred from the far left lane and a middle lane able to be used by slower moving through traffic and trucks, while the far right lane mostly was used to handle all merging in and turning traffic. US 1 between Trenton and Newark is a great example of this. While the worst experience with the jug handle was, as I mentioned earlier, the situation where the Type A jug handle exit was too close to the intersection and the queuing traffic on the crossing road blocked the exit sometimes forcing the driver to just turn right and find a turnaround elsewhere along the crossing road. Overall, once you get used to it, it's pretty good, as in other states with similar major arterial routes with traditional intersections are an absolute nightmare to navigate with an endless amount of traffic lights. Independence Boulevard in Charlotte, North Carolina comes to mind as does Colonial Drive in Orlando, though for the latter, the right of way does not allow for any ramps to be added to that roadway. Down south, the super street design seems to be more favored, where traffic wanting to cross the main road is forced to turn right and make a U-turn further down the main road and then return to the other side of the intersection and turn right. Traffic on the main road can still turn left or right at some signalized crossings, but overall the main idea behind the super street seems to be eliminating the full crossing of the main roadway by the crossing road. While the jug handle still allows for left turns by the crossing road, the super streets also require a wider overall right of way for the main road and might be more favored in sprawling southern cities due to more available and cheaper land. These Jersey jug handles make these arterial routes a somewhat what viable alternative route to the interstates, which is surprising considering that making US-1 a more painful drive would theoretically push more long-range travelers to the told New Jersey Turnpike. All right, guys, there it is, the New Jersey Jug Handle. Have you been to Jersey and experienced the Jug Handle yet? If so, how do you feel about it? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you on the next trip coming soon to a town near you.